Hey guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ExitAutomation.com and welcome to another video of our test project course. And in this video, I'll be talking about working with C-Sharp.NET Core SDK, which is something released recently from test project team. So we're going to discuss about that and we'll also see how we can work with page object models and other great stuff that we can do with Selenium C-Sharp. All right, so let's get started. We saw coded test of test project with Java SDK, but here we are going to discuss with c .NET Core SDK to leverage the same power of coder test that we have discussed in Java as well. So as we know, this is c .NET and we have discussed this Java language so far. There are going to be some new prerequisites this time. So make sure you have the following software in your machine. So you need to have Visual Studio 2017 Community Edition and above. You need to have .NET Core 2.1 or above and the latest version of Test Project Agent. So these are the three very, very super simple prerequisite that you need to have while working with the test project with C-Sharp.net. So as you can see here, the Visual Studio 2017 latest version, if you do the upgrade, which is 15.9.2 or 15.9.3, you'll automatically get the .NET Core 2.1. So make sure you do that update in your machine. That way you'll get both of them together in one single bundle. And finally, the page object model with C-Sharp. So as we know, Selenium C Sharp 3.6.0 is missing one of the most important class page factory used for page object model and page navigation for .NET Core. If you remember, there is a video series which I published in Exit Automation YouTube channel talking about Selenium C Sharp breaking changes. That's exactly what it is. So basically, as you know, that Selenium has slowly started to deprecate the page factory class and they removed it in the 3.6 of .NET Core version 2.0. And you can see there is an issue being filed by the team, but actually it's not an issue. Even Selenium C Sharp with the latest version of .NET 4.6 version as well has removed the page factory. Not removed, but they have started to deprecate it and they have put all the packages into Selenium Extra package. So you can get it from a separate package. And the reason for this is because Using Page Factory provides no benefit over other methods of page object creation in .NET, and this is true for code verbosity as well, which is often the reason cited for the warning to use the Page Factory in .NET. So basically, if you use Page Factory in .NET, even the latest version of .NET, you will get a warning message stating that the Page Factory class is going to be deprecated pretty soon. So we are going to write the page object model in the following format instead of using the selenium extras dot page object namespace with page factory init elements method. So as you can see here, we are going to be using this format as you can see here that we have a web element and we are finding the element using the by dot name instead of using the attribute finds by and using and how or something like that. We're directly going to use something like this and we are going to be working with the same page object model concept that we have discussed in the Selenium Breaking Changes video. So here is the complete workflow of what we're going to be doing in this video. We are going to be using the test project SDK to write the coder test in page object model Selenium C Sharp class. And then we are going to be testing the coder test in our local machine using the test agent that we have installed. And then we'll be taking the DLL file and upload it to the test project code options in the test project portal. And finally, we are going to consume the test package in any one of the respective recorded tests or in the new test. And we'll see how the test is going to be actually executing. So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to Visual Studio IDE. All right, so this is my Visual Studio IDE and you can see that this is Visual Studio 2017, but I have not recently updated to Visual Studio 15.9.4 or something, but I guess I have the most recent version which actually has .NET Core 2.1 framework in it. So the version I have is 15.8.1, which is almost fine. So I'm going to be using this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be creating a new project and make sure that you're going to be selecting the .NET Core instead of the .NET 4.6.2 or something like that. So don't choose that library. Take the .NET Core. So test project team has very specifically taken .NET Core as their SDK support. And the reason is because the code should be executing in multiple different ecosystems and platforms like Mac, Windows, and Linux operating system. And because as you know, .NET Core is something which can be executed in any one of those machines, test project team has very intelligently taken this option of going with .NET Core instead of .NET Framework. 
So we are going to be choosing the .NET Core SDK here. And then I'm going to give a name for this uh, .NET Core project. So basically the name, you can give any name in this case. And I'm going to be giving a name, something like Selenium Test for EA. And then I'm going to be hitting OK. So I'm going to be uploading this project to the GitHub repository. So you can also have this particular uh, project from the GitHub repo. So the class is done in here. And the very coolest option that the team has already added is adding the reference of the NuGet package. So you can see that, I can remove this dependency notification here. So you can see this is the dependency. And you can see that if I right click and go to the properties of the project, it is currently using .NET Core 2.1 as a target framework. So that's something which has been supported by the test project team. And I can go to the dependency, go to the manage NuGet packages, and I can go to the browse, and I can search for test project. And you can see that I will be getting a test project SDK in here. So make sure that you see this logo. So you can select this one. The latest version of SDK currently is 0.46.2. So make sure that you install this as well. So it's going to be installed within our project. And you can see there are so many different libraries this particular project basically require. The test project SDK basically requires. So it's going to be installed in here. All right, it's been installed in here. And you can see that in the NuGet, we have this test project SDK with all the dependencies that is required. So this is the one. And I'm going to be renaming this particular class to maybe something like Selenium test so that it makes things more interesting. So I'm going to just give Selenium test. And I'm going to be changing the class name as well. All right, so this is done. And as you know that we are going to be using the page object model and without using the page factory implementation, basically, I'm going to be creating a folder in here. I'm going to be adding that as pages. And within this pages, I'm going to be adding two pages. So basically, one is login page and another one is the home page. And now you can ask me which application are we going to be really automating this time. So basically, we are going to be automating our exit automation demo site. So you can see exit automation demo site slash login dot HTML. You can see that you can give the username and password as admin and admin hit login. And that will bring you this particular uh, page. And then you can perform the operation in there, right? That's a very, very super simple website. Basically, it's like just a static website. We're not going to be taking the older uh, exit automation website that we have used the EA app. Rather, we're going to be using this website, right? So as that said, we are going to be using this one. So for that, I'm going to create some pages. So we basically have two page here. One is the login page. And another one is the user form page. So these are the two pages that we have got in this particular uh, application. And as I said before, we are going to be using page object model, something like this. So I'm just going to be doing something like that, private i web driver hit control dot and you can see that you will be getting this open qa selenium and underscore driver and similarly i'm going to create a constructor here and let's pass in i web driver of driver so underscore driver is equal to driver so basically you need to pass uh, the driver instance within this particular constructor of this particular class, right? And then we are going to be creating the web elements. So the elements is going to be like txt uh, username, which I'm going to be doing something like driver dot find elements, find element by dot, uh, I guess it's name. I'm pretty much not sure about that. So let's open the application. So this is the username. So inspect the element. So yeah. Its name is uh, username, and I guess the name of the password is password. So I just made it very super simple, as you remember. We have used this application in many of our user automation test cases. So it's username. And similarly, I'm going to be creating uh, for the password as well as for the uh, submit button. So instead of uh, me wasting some time on that particular keystrokes, I'm just going to be copy pasting some of the code which I have already written. So this is done. And then finally, we need to perform a login operation. So for performing a login operation, I'm going to be writing a super simple method 
which is going to be doing the send keys basically something like this as you can see it's going to perform a login with the username and password so i'm just going to be sending the keys and it's going to perform a submit operation that's it that's the super simple code that we have got in here and then i'm going to be creating the user form page.cs as well so the user form page.cs is going to be something that we have uh, got with all this particular uh, forms for the application as you can see in here once i do the login i have the initial first name middle name and language and something like that so i'm just going to be entering all the values in there so for doing that you can go to the uh, user form page oops it seems like i have written everything in the user form page it should be in the login sorry about that just going to be pasting it here and this is login page all right and we'll go back here to the user form page so it's going to be once again private i web element web driver of underscore driver and then public And then the constructor of iWeb driver of driver, which is going to be underscore driver is equal to driver. All right. And then I'm going to be adding all the uh, important text for that particular uh, page, which is going to be these things, right? So you can see that it has the txt initial, txt first name, middle name, language and enter the user form details so that's it this is the super simple class that we have for the user form as well as for the login page right so this is a very very usual selenium thing that we have written in here so far and now let's come back to the test project thing so as you know for the test project if you remember in our previous videos we have discussed about java sdk we used something like web test in selenium java for the java sdk of test project and this time, since this is C-sharp, we are going to be using an IE, which is going to be for the interface, and then web test. So if I hit control dot, you can see that it brings up the test project SDK test over here. I just added that particular uh, reference. And then there is a scrolly line. It says that I need to implement some members. So if I hit control dot and if I hit implement interface, it brings me up this method. If you remember, this is exactly the same method that we saw for the Java SDK as well, the execute method. And there is the same web test helper, which actually resided for the Java SDK as well. Right. So now we are going to be performing exactly the same operation, something like we're going to be calling this helper and we're going to get the driver instance, pretty much exactly the same thing. Right. And then we need to navigate to the app so for navigating to the app we have this driver dot uh, navigate method which is have gonna have the go to URL and the applications URL so the applications URL is gonna be this one I guess let's see yep I'm gonna copy paste it over here and then I'm gonna perform the login operation so for the login operation I'm just going to be calling this uh, login page control dot. There you go. So login page is equal to new of login page. And now it expects us to pass the driver object. So basically the driver object is going to be this guy, right? So I can easily pass that in here. Super simple. And then I'm going to perform a login operation. So uh, perform login. And then I need to pass the username and password, which is going to be admin and admin, right? That's going to perform a login operation for us. So easy it is. So I'm just going to stop in here and then I'm just going to say return execution to result dot passed so that it's going to return us pass operation over there, right? That's it. Uh, let's discuss about the other things later. But as of now, let it be in here, right? So you can see that our library is almost there. We have already written the execution stuffs in here. It's almost ready. I know that this code is going to work because it's very, very super simple. All it has is the execute method. 
and then there is a uh, pages and this particular code is going to satisfy our actual requirement of executing the code within our local machine as well as in the test project in our next video we are going to be adding further project within this particular solution and then we'll see how we can leverage the power of testing the code that we have written so far in our local machine and then we can execute the same within our test projects remote portal so once again thank you very much for watching this video and stay tuned for our next video